Hello, Google Small Business Community. I'm Whitney Lemon here at the Hangout Studio at Google Headquarters, and I'm hosting the second Hangout on Air as part of Social Media Month. So welcome. If you're, that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. Last week, we chatted with LinkedIn, so be sure you check that out if you haven't watched it. Some great stuff. And today, I'm talking to Jen Coleman from YouTube. Jen, how's it going? I'm good. Thanks for having me today. I am so glad you're here. Uh, tell our audience a little bit more about what you do for YouTube. Cool. So I've been with Google for just over five years now. Um, I started in our Dublin office in Ireland, which you may tell I'm from Ireland with the, the funny accent. Um, and I was working on our customer service team there for small businesses uh, for about two years. And then moved to Tokyo, and that's where I actually gained the YouTube experience. So was leading a YouTube operations team there for our implementation of ad services for Asia market. And then about a year and a half ago, I moved to Mountain View to the headquarters here, and I'm a lead on the global YouTube and brand um, sales strategy team. Um, and what that means is that our team represents small businesses globally to make sure that the product and engineering teams are taking into account the needs of our small businesses for our YouTube ads. Very cool. So it sounds like we are going to learn a lot from you today okay. about how and why small businesses should be taking advantage of YouTube. Uh, let's uh, first dive into the first question we ask in the Google Small Business Community. If yeah. you could have a hangout with anyone in the world, who would you choose? Good question. Um, I think I'd have to choose a YouTube star based on the conversation Obviously. we're having. Um, <laughs> Maybe some of you are aware of the most successful YouTube creator in the world right now. His name is PewDiePie. Um, he's Swedish and right now has 32 million subscribers. And um, putting that in context, that Ireland has 4 million population. So wow. this guy has 32 million subscribers uh, watching his content. Um, and if you're curious as to what he does, yeah. he um, commentates games. So he plays computer games and then is a commentator against it so you can see his reaction to what he plays. Um, so I think I'd like to hang out with him and learn like why he does that, how he got into it, and, and how he's actually set up his business on, on YouTube. That is so interesting. Yeah. So what is the most embarrassing thing that you would ask him? Oh, wow. OK. Got to think about that one. Um, I suppose with him being like a game nerd and always being online, um, maybe how many hours or days has he gone playing online games or making YouTube videos and not showering? <laughs> okay. I don't know how, how appropriate that is to ever ask anyone. But <laughs> I think that's a very, very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we should send this video to him so he, he answers <laughs> us via YouTube. Well, check, check him out. Um, it's pretty amazing to see the traction he's getting with fans. That is amazing, 32 cool. million followers. Yeah. All right, well, let's dive in. Uh, so small businesses uh, who'd like to jump into YouTube, what are their first steps that they should take to build that presence? Right. Um, so I suppose the first step, which makes the most sense, and this is small or large businesses, is actually to have video content. So creating content. And I think a misconception there is that whether you're a big business or a small business, you need a full production team. You need a media house. You need professional guys coming in with, with professional camera crews. And that's not the case at all. Like some of the most successful videos on YouTube are actually made by viewers, made by creators um, who are actually just using smartphones, using um, some GoPro kits or even just digital cameras themselves. Um, a really good example actually is a small business called Glowy Zoe. Um, again, check them out. Um, the owner, who's a, who's a family man, um, he makes these costumes uh, for like Halloween and stuff, but they're made from LED lights. So they look really cool. They're like stick men as you're walking around um, in the dark. And he just used his smartphone to video his daughter in the costume at night and used that to put up on his YouTube channel. And he also put a bit of, um, he put it on AdWords for videos. So he had a bit of revenue behind it and um, promoting it. Um, and it was really, really successful. And he's gotten a lot of traction, a lot of business from that. And that was just from using his smartphone. Um, another great example of like a smaller size business using YouTube and not with a big production house as well um, is Warby Parker, um, who are a bit more well known. Um, but what they do, they create kind of how to and help videos and they upload them on their YouTube channel every day. They're answering questions from their customers about like, hey, I, I broke my glasses. How every do I fix it? Every single day. Every single day, Warby Parker uploading videos. Wow. But again, it's just them sitting at their desks and work and they're using a GoPro. And they're just answering questions, uploading that to, to their YouTube channel. So they're constantly engaging with their community, but they don't have a full production house. They're not investing loads of money in that. And anyone can do that. Anyone can use their smartphones, use their digital cameras, take pictures of your business, of your space, and like edit them together to make like a more cohesive video as well. And you can do that really easy. We actually have tools on YouTube.com where there's like a video editor that you can use on that as well. Okay, so make sure you have a lot of content, start, start creating those videos yes. 
Uh, so that way, when you create the page, you have a bunch of good stuff people right. can go to see. And to your point, then, the next step after that is actually to create a YouTube channel. Okay. So, <laughs> I got ahead. So of you, in order, in order, well, in order to um, host those videos and get them on YouTube, and um, if you go to YouTube.com, you're able to actually start creating that YouTube channel, that YouTube presence for for your small business. Um, and keep in mind, um, many of you might have a Facebook or a Twitter or a, even a LinkedIn page for your business, and um, and think of YouTube as like an extension of your social media. So using YouTube and making that your home and making that your hub for uploading interesting things about your business or communications and interactions with your community or updates on your products and things like that. They can be a 15 second video or a two minute video if you want to really educate the audience on something. But having that uploaded on that hub um, is, is really valuable. So create your YouTube channel and get that started would be my next step. Okay, think of it as an extension of your social media yes. channels. I really, really like that. That's Definitely. so great. Uh, so now that businesses know, well, first, this doesn't cost anything for them. No, this is all free. Okay. This is all free. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll talk more about kind of like the other free aspects of, okay. of YouTube as well. Okay, so now that they know like what the first steps are to start creating that content, uh, what are they gonna find when they get there? What's the audience like on YouTube? Really good question because things are changing in like <laughs> the last 10 years, not only that, in the last two years, how people are interacting with media and with entertainment is completely changing and shifting. So the millennials are not watching TV anymore. Um, I was speaking recently and the age group was a, is kind of like the 18 to 34 age group. It's about 100 people in the audience. And we asked how many people here own a TV? Honestly, about a third of the people put up their hands. Wow. It's changing, people aren't using that kind of media anymore. Um, our biggest audience on YouTube right now is the 18 to 34 year old age group. However, we have people across every demographic um, using YouTube. The 34 to 49 age group is also represents over 20% of our viewership, which is wow. really substantial. So those decision makers and people who are actually making the purchasing decisions in the household are on YouTube and they're, they're watching. Um, and we also get asked, you know, what's the, the demographic breakdown, like male and female? For the US, it's 50-50, oh, which wow. is great. Okay. Yeah, so so everyone is watching everyone YouTube. and their mother is on <laughs> okay. is on YouTube um, and an educated audience, which is interesting enough as well. So um, Nielsen did a study, and over fifty five percent of our viewers on YouTube are actually college graduates or beyond. So they've gone further in their in their education as well. So we've an educated audience. We have the demographic breakdown across all age groups, and we have male and female across that as well. So really, really wide. And then if we're thinking about the numbers, which can be quite overwhelming, um, every day, 100 million users watch online video. So that's, wow. that, that's massive. So every day we've got that many users online watching online video. Um, and then more interestingly enough, which might be more relevant, is 90% of people who are actually making an online purchase find video helps them make that online purchase. Okay. Um, and personally, I'm not sure if you've got a similar experience, but I, I just purchased a DSLR camera. So it's a pretty substantial purchase decision. Um, and I used YouTube to understand kind of like different manufacturers and they have videos kind of comparing. You've got people who just bought the, the, um, the new camera and they're telling you kind of how to set it up and how easy it was. And it actually completely influenced my purchasing decision at the end of the day. So different way of purchasing and different way of buying at the moment. We learned that 97% of consumers research products online before right. making a purchase. So videos, it sounds like, play a huge part in it's that. It's beginning to, absolutely. Um, and it's becoming more and more powerful. Wow. So we learned a stat uh, recently at VidCon that really struck, struck with us, um, struck us <laughs> and stuck with us. Uh, videos with top 10, yep. uh, literally say top 10 in their title, get 531% more views. That's Amazing. I believe it. Definitely wow. believe it. Um, when you think about it, I, I, and I bet you that the, that top 10 statement was probably at the forefront of the video rather than kind of in the middle or the end okay. to like capture the audience's attention. Um, and we actually find as well, and a lot of you may be aware that in our advertising product for, for YouTube, you have the skip option there as well, right? So after five seconds, you're watching a video on YouTube and then the, an ad comes up and you've got after five seconds, you can skip it. And what you'll notice, the ads that you'll remember from watching that will be the ads that have a statement like top 10 in the first five seconds. They have the logo of their business. They mention the name of their business or they, or, and or they actually tell you where to go to find out more information. So it's like visit us at, you know, 
XX crossing, you know, a physical location. Or it can even be like visit our website at www.xyz. So having that in the first couple of seconds is really, really powerful. So a top 10 statement, um, even if it's like best in class and um, in the in the vicinity that your community that you're in, um, if you're the only provider of a certain service or a certain product within your community or within your space, definitely like say those things that okay. make you stand out and make people actually remember you and, and want to find out more about your product or service. Okay, so beyond saying something, top 10 something, that's an interesting tip for small business owners if they're interested in making those videos. Uh, what other tips, uh, you, you just said they could um, say that they're the only provider, what right. else? So we actually kind of follow three key tips when we're creating content. And this goes for the smallest business up to some of our largest clients as well. And it would be to follow three rules. You want to entertain the audience. So that's actually to make the audience laugh or surprise the audience. Okay. This is some of the harder content to create. You need to be a little bit creative. And um, you'll see some of the bigger brands try to do this now with um, if they're if they're doing some like surprising content, and you've no idea what they're about to do, yes. or they're they're in the, like, the public space and they're surprising people, and then it's suddenly it's the brand, like the Pepsi one where he Jeff Gordon is the driver. Yes. Oh, I love that exactly one. the speed tests and stuff like yeah. that. So that's kind of like the entertain, but you can still entertain no matter what size okay. business you are. Um, however, the next aspect is educate. So entertain, educate, and um, educate is kind of giving the users useful information about your product or service. And that doesn't need to just be there standing saying, hey, we're, we're the bakery around the corner and you can come by and, and buy all, the, all the, the freshest bakery stuff off us. It's more giving people the information that they're actually searching for. So YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world after Google.com, which it probably isn't a surprise. Um, so people are actually using YouTube as a search engine. They're asking for wow. tips. They're asking how to do things. So how-to videos are a huge search um, um, search on YouTube. So people are asking like how to make a cake, how to shave. And that's actually a really good one. People are asking young men are searching kind of how to shave. And if you do this and you should open up youtube.com and look up how to shave, you'll see Gillette has actually gotten made a lot of videos just showing men how to shave. Content, step content by step. marketing. With content videos, marketing. So They're going through step by step. So if you are if you are a bakery um, or you're a small business owner, you're a hairdresser or you're a shop around the corner, you can actually create videos that if people are asking like how to dye my hair or how to make meringues, which is tricky, um, you can actually make a video, have your brand, have your logos, have your shop name, address and everything on it, but you're just giving the audience what they're looking for. Right. And people will then remember you and you can create content based on that as well. Um, so how-to videos are huge. So we've got entertain, educate. And then the last one is inspire. Mm. And again, I think this is where our small business owners can really and kind of take a lot of tips from. Because Inspire is kind of to make an emotional or relatable experience with your customers. And no one's able to do that more than people who are actually in a community. Um, so if you're part of a community, get people who are actually using your services, using your products, and, and speak to them, talk to them, ask them for their experiences, ask them what it's like being part of this community actually have you as the business owner, which is really important. Don't bring in friends or experts to come in and talk about your product. You talk like you're the best and most credible person to talk about your business. So you get up there and you talk about it and your experiences and why you're doing this in the community. And that's going to touch people and that's going to make people relate to you and, and have that emotional connection. So use your community and get them talking and, and video them on your smartphone and, and upload that. So educate, entertain and inspire. Okay. If you do one or all of those three things, they're, they're definitely our top, top tips. Great. That's easy to remember. Educate, entertain, or entertain, educate, inspire. Yeah, exactly. OK. So we've mentioned a few big brands, but like, there's also a ton of opportunities for free things yes. on YouTube. What are some free features that small business owners should take advantage of and can take advantage of? That's a very valid question. And um, so we touched on one, which is setting up your channel. So it's completely free. Um, go through the process of actually setting up your YouTube channel. And um, once you have that done and you start uploading videos, um, you can make thumbnails, uh, which means that they're like snapshot pictures once yeah. you're searching for the videos so that when people actually search and they're looking for what video to pick, you've got an appealing picture for your video to put up there. Um, not like a... Yeah, not like a motion <laughs> or just a blank space. Um, so definitely use that. It's, it's amazing how much that actually changes people's perception of what to click on. Um, annotations are a big one. So if you're not aware of what these are, these are kind of um, text boxes that come up over the videos. 
and they're free. You can add these onto your videos. And what they do is like during the points of the video, you can actually add more information through text form over the video. So if you want to give people information about, okay, oh, for to find out more about this, visit our website and you can actually click people off of YouTube onto your website. And that's called an annotation. Very cool. So definitely add some annotations in, completely free. Um, a really important one, which in terms of like helping people make sure that their videos are, are found as well, is rich descriptions. So a lot of people upload videos and expect it to be like just found and um, viral and everything like that. But you need to write very detailed descriptions and have like keywords that really relate to your business and what people would be searching for in order to find your type of video. Okay. So putting the time and effort into writing those descriptions is actually so important. really, really important. Um, and then the last one I'd recommend is call to action overlays as well. So having those call to actions, telling people to visit your website or come to your corner store and, and actually telling people what to do once they've watched your video is, is really powerful as well. So those would be my top five things, channel, thumbnail, annotations, rich descriptions, and call to actions. Great tips. Yeah. Uh, Lois from the community wants to know how YouTube can be used to get the word out about social causes. So oh, great. Uh, yeah, let us know a little bit more about that. So that's that's actually a really interesting question because we do have an initiative for charities um, and for not-for-profit businesses as well. And um, it's called YouTube for Charities. Um, and you can actually set this up for free, again, completely free. But by doing this, once you're deemed like a credible not-for-profit non um, business or company, um, you can actually get free support from directly from YouTube to help set up your channel, to make sure you're using the right tools. Um, and then there's also about 20,000 not-for-profit companies using this right now. Um, and then hundreds of these channels actually have more than 1 million views on their, their channels right now. So we, we can, we're able to help facilitate these, these companies that are really going out there and doing some good for, for the world and make sure they're getting the right support from Google and the right tools to, to set up those channels properly. And there's also a couple of great examples of charities that have done well on YouTube, um, not-for-profit and, um, and the kind of the social causes. So Charities Aid Foundation, if you uh, search them on YouTube, they've got some really great content. Um, and localgiving.com. So if you search for those guys there, you can look for them and kind of see kind of how they've been able to set up their channel and their, their videos, some, some really good examples there. Any suggestions for small businesses that are doing some really great things on YouTube that we should check out? Um, in terms of examples of like some that some are using guys. video really well. Yeah. Definitely. So we touched on Glowy Zoe and Warby Parker. So definitely yeah, check those yeah. guys out. Um, another great example is LSTN. Have you heard of these? Mm -hmm. They're, they make headphones. Um, but it's a really powerful story. So what they've done is they made this business because of um, they're helping the deaf people. So when they actually sell these headphones, they're giving money back to the deaf community. Um, and their videos, all made with like very limited budget, are just the owners actually talking about their experience, why they've set this up, why it's important to them. They're really using that like emotional factor um, in creating their content. So check out LSTN. Um, and then also the barbecue guys, another kind of small business who are doing really, really well. Um, what they do is they upload content nearly daily at the moment. So they're constantly uploading, they're engaging with their community, they're answering questions, they're getting in touch with their fans. Um, and what they do with, after they upload a lot of content, they choose what content is being received best from, the, from their viewers. Um, and then they'll actually put more kind of like maybe marketing budget behind that to push, to push that content. So they'll choose kind of out of everything they're uploading, what's working best, and then push that further to expand their, their presence as well. So the barbecue guys are, are doing a pretty good job. How do you know if it's working? Aside from the obvious, like I have a lot of people who have watched this video, right. how should small businesses be tracking these for That's success? Very valid. And I think a lot of small businesses and even some of our larger, larger businesses rely on like the performance metrics so looking at kind of like clicks or and um, drives to conversions or getting those those sales at the end of the day and um, and video you need to kind of like set those expectations a little differently it is a little different in terms of the the results you're going to get um so it's going to be more on the like views likes shares and um, kind of estimated time watched and you can get all that information directly from youtube interface itself so we actually have video analytics within the YouTube interface. So you can use that directly once you've uploaded your video, you get all that information directly within YouTube. But if you actually upload your video into AdWords for video, 
where you create a true view campaign. So we've got the five second skip. Um, there you can get even further information about demographics, who's been watching your video, and also the cost per view, which is important once you're putting right. um, budget behind it as well. Um, and then you've also can link it with your YouTube analytics so that you can link your how much you're spending and the the traction you're getting on your paid views versus what you're getting organically as well. Um, and something really important, we touched on the five seconds and, and what that means in terms of that's an ad when you have to skip. Um, something that people don't understand or don't, don't know actually is that you have all that, the first five seconds are free. Um, so you actually have that time to capture the audience. Even if someone skips your ad, if you've told them who okay. your logo, like who your um, business is, you've given them the logo, you've told them what to, where to go, what your website is, you're not paying for anyone who skipped your ad. Wow. You're also not paying for anyone who doesn't reach up to 30 seconds of watching or the end of the video. So if, you're, if the end of your video is 20 seconds or 15 seconds, once they finish your video, that's when we actually charge for, for the view. Okay. But if someone watches 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and your, your video is 30 seconds, we, don't, we actually don't charge you for that. So okay. only when they reach the 30 second or the end of the video, whichever comes first, okay. that's when you get charged for the view. So you have a lot of creative opportunity yeah. for, free, for free views if you decide to, to put some marketing budget behind, behind actually promoting your video content. But if you have all of your content right off the bat, what's going to encourage your audience to watch till the end? Oh, so that goes back to the point of making sure that you've got those interesting facts and okay. that, that you've got the entertain, educate, inspire aspects okay. of your videos. So things like that as well okay. would definitely help. Keep them, keep them hooked. Keep them there. hooked, exactly. Uh, so we have a couple questions from the community. Let me check these out. Oh, actually, I was interested to know a little bit more about the mobile landscape um, in regards right. to YouTube because a lot of our small businesses know that like everybody's going mobile. People are searching on mobile devices more than laptops. Right. So how does YouTube translate? Definitely, and um, a misconception actually that people think that people don't watch video on mobile. They're kind of like, <laughs> they're like, no, sure, it's so small. Why would you watch video? Forty-six percent of all our views on YouTube right now are on mobile. So nearly half of all our views are actually on the mobile devices. And when you believe it, like everyone's. If you're commuting, if you're waiting for a bus, if you're hanging around or you're just finishing work, it's really easy now to just pick up YouTube and start watching content. I actually use it, like I get all my news on YouTube now. I go in and all my subscriptions and able to see what's been uploaded that morning and I'll watch my news on, on YouTube as I'm commuting to work. So never discount mobile. Mobile is our fastest growing like device where YouTube is being, is being used. Um, and it's a really, really nice interface. We just up, um, refreshed it a couple of weeks ago. So it's a check it out um, and, and give us your feedback as to what you think about the new mobile inter interface as well. But it's, um, it's really important to remember that, especially for our small businesses, people are on their mobiles all the time. People check their mobile phones more than 100 times an, a day at the moment. So you're like constantly I believe it. Yeah. picking it up, right? Um, and we have to be there as a, any kind of small business, any kind of large business, we have to be there at any moment that people are searching for a last minute birthday cake because they forgot that it was their cousin's birthday. Um, they're searching for a dentist, for a doctor because they need to make sure they book an appointment for their husband. They're doing that on their mobile phone. Right. And we call these micro moments, yep. right? Where, where you're trying to hit people in the moments that matter when they're on their phones. And video is just as important. Okay. So making sure that you're there when someone wants to review something or, or get in touch with people. So definitely keep a keep a top of mind. Never discount it. So there's nothing that small businesses need to do to optimize for mobile. It automatically translates. It automatically and looks good translates. on the small screen. Yep, it's all there. Great. Yeah. All right. Now I will take some questions Great. from uh, the audience. So Marielle, forgive me if I mispronounced that. Uh, asked, if I'm starting my business from scratch on the YouTube platform, how can I get the help needed on YouTube? Are there any resources I can use? There absolutely is. Um, so first of all, we do have a YouTube help center. Um, I'll be sure to make sure we give all the links after this as Thank well, you. all our case studies that we've chatted about or success stories as well. Um, so we do have that. We also have a brand, brand for YouTube playbook. So it kind of gives you tips as like a business owner, um, what are kind of like the tips you should do and what you should be able to, to actually produce um, as a business owner and step-by-step -step guides uh, as to kind of the right kind of content to create. So I'll be sure to, to make sure that we get that all up on the community for, for you as well. But there is stuff there. So we'll, we'll get that to your SAP so you can start. All right, Matt asks, is there an optimal length for videos? 
Very good question. Um, for businesses, we tend to say kind of like the 30 second um, video is, is really good, but then it depends. This is kind of if you're talking about your business and, and what you offer, 30 seconds is like an optimal time period. However, when we talked about the how-to videos and kind of getting found and, and making sure that people are able to find you when they're actually searching for content, that can be longer, right? Because if you're looking for kind of like how to make a meringue or how to bake a cake or things like this, you're, you're not going to be expected to be able to do that in 30 seconds. So having that longer form content is also a, a good idea okay. when you're doing more of the informational and how-to videos based on the product or services that your that your business can actually offer. But we would say um, the most optimal would be 30 seconds. You should be able to get your message across and how you want the audience actually engage with your with your business in, in a 30 second period. That forces you to get creative it too. It does. And really just kind of trim the fat. Yeah, don't speak fast because of that. Just, <laughs> just okay. JD said, um, can I link my YouTube channel to my business's Google Plus page? Um, do you know what? I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, you can link it to your AdWords for video page um, account, and so your um, AdWords account. But let me follow up on that, and I'll, I'll make sure that we, we get an I answer. I believe you. the answer is yes. OK. We'll, yeah, we'll follow up. We'll follow up on that. Thanks, Kyle maybe. asks, do you have recommendations on who I can hire or get help from to make videos for my business? Freelancers, agencies? That's, a, that's a, again, a very good question. We do have some recommendations. Um, if you go to youtube.com forward slash ads, um, we have some recommendations there as to, uh, um, some agencies that can actually help out as well. And um, also, we we partnered with Director, so Google actually acquired this company called Director, um, and they're an app. It's for businesses. It's an app on your phone that you download, and it helps you create videos for YouTube or for any platform, for Facebook or wherever you want to use it. Um, it helps you create videos through this app, all on your mobile phone, and it gives you templates and everything. So cool. again, on YouTube.com/ads, there's a link to Director there and, and how to actually use that as well. So I, I would definitely recommend checking that out and, and again give us your feedback on on testing it and on how those templates work out for you. So if they visit that landing page, it'll literally be called director. And um, so if they go to youtube.com slash ads, there is a link off for creating okay. video ads and director is an is an opportunity within there. Is that free? It is uh, it is free as um, an, an initial download. And I think there's okay. like packages that you can buy beyond that for different templates. But okay. again I, I can check that out. Yeah. Okay, depending yeah. on a business's needs. Yeah. All right, last question. We've covered a lot of really great information. If you could boil everything down into your top yeah. three pieces of advice for a small business owner new to YouTube. Um, get online, which is okay. probably, what you, <laughs> probably what everyone's been, been saying. Um, it's great. But people are, they're using mobile. Again, we'll, we've touched on this. So like, get online purely because people, that's what they're doing so much of their time with is, is being online and on mobile specifically. So um, get a presence online, Get make your Facebook page, your YouTube channel, and create a website if you're able to do that as well. And just make sure that people are able to find you. Because if they don't find you, they're going to find someone else, um, especially when they're searching for things. Um, secondly, pick up your smartphone and, and start shooting. Um, just play around with it. Walk around your shop, walk around your premises. If you have a product and you're selling that, like just start taking pictures and videos of that or people using it um, and play around with that. So I'm not necessarily saying that that's what you use as your final video, but explore the opportunities with that. Um, and then lastly, set up your YouTube channel and check out PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking questions. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's a great piece of advice because small business owners, they often think, you know, since we're small, we, we are not going to be able to have these videos that go viral, but PewDiePie is just an average guy. Right. He's so just check an average out. guy. Check him out. And there's See so many out there. Yep. Learn from him. Yeah. All right. That is all the time all right. we have for you today. So be sure to tune in next week when Rachel is back and we're chatting with Pinterest. Um, you can access all of our content at g.co slash gsbc. And be sure to follow Google Small Business on Google Plus, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, where we give you all the help you need to succeed on the web. Until next time, I am Whitney Lemon, and on behalf of the entire small business team at Google, I wish you great success growing your business. Thank you.